1992, October 21st. That's crazy. That's how. That's so long ago. Like we were babies. We were children when these matches were happening. Owen Hart, he was 27 years old, and he was the youngest of 12 children. He probably taken, received a lot of beatings, and that in turn makes you pretty tough. Ultimo Dragon, 25 at the time, almost 26, began his career in 87, went to Mexico, where he adopted the Ultimo Dragon persona. This makes for a very interesting style clash in a time before these styles were even around. A little show of respect here at the top. Now this. This look that Ultimo Dragon has, this is what everyone imagines Ultimo Dragon looks like. Like when you think about him, you're like, yeah, dude, the black, gold, silver, red. Possibly the coolest look anyone had seen. Yeah, has anybody ever had that, uh, like a chest plate that through the mask, like, ooh. Kick to the midsection. And then Owen Hart's looking like a trapper keeper from the 90s. Straight out saved by the bell. Intro, the bell rings, you missed the bus. The speed and quickness of both of these wrestlers was at the time, you know, it's 1992, it's peak Hogan, it's that, it's the end of that rock and wrestle era into what we, we used to refer to as the dark ages of pro wrestling. Slow compared to contemporary wrestling, you see it now, but this, this is hard for a course. And then when they, yeah, when they break, this is when it starts to speed up here. Oh, quick, body slam. Classic scoop slam. People don't really scoop. There's there's rarely any scoop slams happening now. Right into a Fujiwara. It's super intentional. It's creative. It's catch as catch can inspired. But then Dragon took it to a whole different. He had that luchador. So did Owen Hartman. Look at that kip up head spring kip up reverse. They were doing it so clean. And this wasn't, you know, this wasn't an era of ultra choreographed rehearsed matches. And there's a there's a huge language barrier here too. You gotta think yourself out uh, straight arm bar. Now this is, you know, the, everybody knows what this is, straight arm bar. Back in the day, you know, like, what's he doing? Is he extending the elbow? Is he breaking, like what? You, you didn't really yeah, know. Yeah, they called it the cross was. arm breaker, right? It was like cross arm breaker. It's known in grappling as an arm bar. They call it now the Juju Katami. Juju Katami there! He wasn't in WWE, WCW, Mattress. Yeah. I, I think something to point out, when you get a, when you get a, a hold in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it's very, there's so much tension and pressure and fighting on it. But pro wrestling didn't quite know how to translate that. So, because you know, like once you get the, the arm bar, it's over. Once the arm's hyperextended... So, like, wrestling always struggled with that early on, right? Because, like, they used it as a, almost a rest hold yeah. or a chain wrestling move where it's like, no, you can't, like, you always have to have the hands clasped or fighting it. Otherwise, you it's over. Your, your elbow's hyperextended. The, the, you're going to tap or you're going to have a broken arm. Yeah. Here's one of our favorite, the bridge, the test of strength into the bridge. We used to do that in the early days. The, the hop on top right here. You know, you need a strong neck for that. Yeah. Dude. I mean, a lot of weight is on the arm, but still, like, you, you guy can easily fall on the bottom and run this maneuver. When you see dudes do this today, they're either doing it too fast with less intention. This is crazy right here. What the hell? Oh, what was 92, that? 92, guys. Yeah. Sitting moonsault. There we go. Now Sarah can rise a little loose on the legs, but still. It, yeah. Very rare. What did he just do? Like, let's take a moment. It looks like he had his legs around him and flipped him over with his legs. Like, seems like some type of maneuver. Some type of, oh, look at that. Just a leg pick, dude. Now, that's the other thing. Like, that's a really sick, you know, those types of takedowns were unheard of outside of like traditional grappling. This is a, almost like a, in, in Gia 2, it's almost like a 50 50 where both guys have an opportunity for a leg lock. And it's almost a, almost ahead of his time where. Oh, it's the leg lock is such a huge part of jiu-jitsu and submission grappling now. It's almost people solely train on the leg locks. Dragon using that at this time, because it was like, dude, he wasn't just a high flyer. He wasn't just like a good grappler by like traditional Japanese pro wrestling standards. He was doing MMA moves before MMA, really. The arm bar, the leg lock there. Even the way he applied this modified figure four on the legs was more of a grappler's approach. It wasn't a pro wrestling approach. Like he got, he got like kind of a top position 
and then shifted the legs and used like leverage and weight where you know the rick flair traditional figure four he spins the knee and it's all it's very theatrical it's very american now look, pro he, wrestling he's, he's going for a guillotine here another thing that front headlock you think you just be paying yourself but it's a real that's a real submission and that back then people didn't know what that was Oh, uh, look at this lack of disrespect by Owen Hart. He's trying to... Is that every match with a guy wearing a mask, someone tries to take the mask off? Like, yeah. Is that the cheapest heat move you could ever do? I guess when you don't understand the language, you gotta, you know, go back to the basics. Yeah, Owen gets a little stiff with him. You can tell, like, I don't know if that's just Owen being Owen, but, like, he gets a little stiff, One that level of one-upsmanship. That was a great throw there. Very judo. A deep judo throw Wait, over the shoulder. Drop kick. Beautiful High flipping. Ball. Strong kick out. Oh, goes back to the leg. Uh-oh, single leg crab. Yeah. Uh, oh, you saw a tap there, right? This is before taps were taps. It's when you just tap the mat. You just tap to the like, anger. I'm in pain. Yeah, I got to try to think. Ultimo had a basis in judo. A lot of Japanese could do judo. So there is that submission background. But, I mean, yeah, he has a... Here we go. Inziguri, which he folds the other way. Inziguri comes from actually a Japanese word of... A medulla oblongata, which is on the back of the head. A oh, striking wow. back. I didn't know that. Yeah. You see, that's a nice neck breaker. I prefer the sit out neck breaker. I think that's the most brutal looking of the neck breakers. The layout is a little bit too too soft on both combatants. Some in this match, they both did scoop slams. You'd never get scoop slams anymore. It's one of my favorite moves in wrestling. It does set up really well. It is a great yeah. setup slam. And when when you scoop it properly, it look it just looks nice. It looks like it it looks way flashier than it is. There you go, I'm cross face rear chin lock, and they're doing an abdominal straight. Oh, oh cross face chicken wing. Bob Backlund. Oh, once you clasp those arms, he's in bags. No, there's no escape. There's literally no escape, except for that one arm free that you have. You completely get yourself out of the hole. <laughs> 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 very easily just get yourself out of the hole with the other arm that's completely free and there's no leverage on it or nothing. Like you could just grab. Yeah, the crossface chicken wing was always a weird one to me. And the, oh, spinning back leg. Dude, that spinning back kick, I, I remember it from video games, from everything. Even that, even that, like this combo, this whole sequence that he's running through right now, that is vintage Ultimo Dragon. But you got to remember these were moves no one else ever did. The snap suplex, yeah, snap. like butter, with the dude. Leg that kick. is the smoothest, yeah. quickest with the leg, leg kick. kick. These are all dragon signature moves. So, like, it's not like he invented one, two, three. Like, these are all his own invention, but also his own flair. So, yeah, see, he goes back to the arm bar like it's a rest hold. Like, he's wearing down the arm where the, it's hyperextended, it's over. You know, like, that's, that's a good old-fashioned stomp. What do we got here? He's heading to the top rope. Three days to Benoit, uh, headbutt from the top. Yeah, but I, I, I can do it without it. that version of the headbutt. Let's <laughs> uh, hang that one up. Where you at? Ooh. There we go. Oh, see that Owen threw that really close. That drop kick and fucking caught him in the chops a little bit. Put something on the top rope. Now this at the time, anything off the top rope. This, this is high risk, high flying maneuver. Right? Look, oh, lands right yeah. on him. Not much and, care and there. It's, that's a hard impact. Dude. Yeah. That is a hard... Like, there's no way to really fake that one. No, no, Dragon, Dragon tries, tries to get his knees down, down quickly, but that just clobbers Owen Hart. That's got to give him a second to catch his breath here. That sunset flip was so clean. I mean... And, the, and, and Dragon puts a little flare on the back body drop. Like, he wasn't doing a complete head-on. Here we go. See, that's Owen snap suit. Yeah. He almost and like, it's completely different than dragons. Yeah. He almost does a, a wide hop into it, and the dragon does the, the quick flip. Now, he's doing, going for the sharpshooter. Look at, but look how, like, I watch people do sharpshooters today, and I'm like, what the, what the heck are you doing? Like, the rock sharpshooter was an abomination. <laughs> you know, this. I love the rock, but his, it's such an obvious leverage play, what you're doing. See how that's his so, arm all the way in? That's, yeah. that's different. Yeah. That's, that's very tight. That's very tight, and it's like, you know, it's a concept of a figure four. There's so many. It, it, it doesn't work in all aspects of it, but as you know, as a black belt in jujitsu, the concept of a figure four, that pressure created by the shape, yeah, it can be applied to any body part. So it, 
it's again, there's a theatricality to how it's applied, but that is a real pressure inducer. Once your legs are, are bent and crossed, you really don't have much power in the legs to defend. Yeah. Either, whether you're turned over or front, but yeah, it's, it's all about going for leg locks or defending leg locks or even ankle locks. Once that the legs are bent and back towards their butt, heel to their butt, you basically negate the strength of the leg. So that's, yeah. now he just lets it go. It goes into a surfboard or a bow and arrow. Sorry, bow and arrow here. Bow and arrow. I think this is underutilized. This is a great, this is a great like theatrical wrestling move. It, 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 it would be impossible to actually put a person in something like that because the leverage just isn't there. You know, that's like a teamwork move, you and the, your opponent. Where he drop kick. Back to the high flipping. Dude, that wheel kick, it was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Because normally wheel kicks are like a big like a big show piece where you whip them off the ropes. He did it so close quarters. Mm -hmm. Now, this next sequence gets real rough and tumble. Yeah. I don't know what they knew about suplexes to the outside because it no. is a little herky jerky here, <laughs> but it looks like it could have been it could have ended up a lot worse than it was. Cause right yeah, I don't know if this is them being safe, you know, or if Dragon being like, oh, and what the heck are you doing now? But this this dive is so brutal because missed the mats completely. Bank. I mean, there's nowhere to go, dude. There's nowhere to go. You land on that guy, like, on the back, too, and it's on concrete. You can't, that's, like, that's 400-plus pounds landing. Of pressure, yeah. And, and Owen is beefier than dragon by probably like 50 pounds yeah i got a lot less under there just to, just for show my guy he was just showing off you know he's like i got the immaculate fit from the 90s i gotta show out those are possibly the worst tights i've ever seen a little british bulldog here hanging Lo dude that was really nice what a nice hang vertical suplex when it's done properly like those the classic moves when done properly and guys like Owen, Brett, any Japanese wrestler always nail them. Lights. They always nail them. Turned out. At the bridge. There we go. Nice, dude. Barely kicked out on that one. Right. What was going on there? Shoots him off the ropes. There's. That's that spinning. That's that spinning, high spinning belly to belly. Not always my favorite. I like the flipping over the head. But, you know, with time, it, it grew on me because it, it is very much reminiscent of like a Greco-Roman throw where you're you're putting all that torque on your upper body to get them over. And he's working for the surfboard. Now, this is another very theatrical submission, and it's not easy to do. No, not at all. This took us so long to get like, I mean, he even these guys are the best and he couldn't hold them up. For yeah. More than, and, and that that was not on purpose. No, it's a hard move. It's a hard balancing move. It's a hard leverage move to get. Yeah. Once you get your momentum going back, it goes right into the pin. It's hard to keep it up. But it's, it's yeah. still it's still that dude, that fall, that fall away body slam was really clean. Dude. Awesome. That wheel kick again. He pulls he pulls the, the spinning heel kick wheel kicks out of nowhere. This dive, bananas. That's a bananas dive. Yeah. That's, and it's not easy to dive through the ropes, as as we both know. Like you really have to straighten yourself out and get distance. You can easily get caught in those ropes and make it look like you you screwed up there. Especially near the turnbuckle. Yeah. There's there's the 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 margin for error because because Owen was standing on the diagonal, so he had to. If you see Dragon's like arm kind of ducks around. Yeah the the post to get through there and I, I think something to point out and you pointed this out when we were going over our notes the ring is a big ass ring and it's stiff as all get out yeah. you know like this not isn't... probably not as stick as, stiff as the wwf ring oh there Perfect. we go fisherman suplex fisherman's now you see a lot of old-time finishers here i mean neck breaker fisherman suplex that's a nice side suplex um, dude japan was throwing side suplexes like that before like we we used to watch these and be like, oh my god, you can't you can't fall on your neck that way. And now he's returning the favor. Sharpshooter, how now dare he? Another finisher at the time. These guys are throwing out finishers. There's no protection here. <laughs> 
dude but uh like nowadays everyone this does a stunner or a version of a cutter so like that i guess that's just what happens with time it's interesting because japan didn't respect finishers quite like how america did in the mid 90s to early 2000s mm. like the finish wasn't i i mean Mas masawa won the triple crown with an elbow strike the finish was the finish, but the finisher didn't necessarily do the trick. Ah, there was a botch. Yeah, yeah. It, it could have been better done. I don't know if it was supposed I'm not sure who missed that. And the Ultimo kind of went late. In it. Dude, I can't get over this. Ultimo fit is just so dope, dude. It's so cool. But if you try to, like, saw somebody, like, I want to wear this chest plate, shoulder plate. They're like, what are you talking, like, Legion and do? What, like... But it looks yeah. so good. Oh, the this German. Go oh, around. Man. Bridge. Clean ass German. Hip up. Good. Yeah. Clean ass German bridge pin. Do you know so much has come out about doing bridging suplexes and neck work like that is really bad for you? Yeah. Another, like from, from the man himself, Kurt Angle was like, I wouldn't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> so Taz was smart and just throwing those. Ooh. Clean moonsault real quick. Picking him up. Oh, went for the dragon. Nope. Victory roll. Modified. This is this is this, this tempo is getting up there. Yeah. This is still for not being like an insanely fast paced match. Oh. Up. He went to the well one too many times. Oh. Look, Owen, he doesn't sit out. That's he didn't sit out. Didn't sit out. He didn't can't do, do what he did to was... Austin. Nope. <laughs> but he did it fast and he did it hard. Yeah. That was pretty hard and quick. I'll, I'll say something for the tempo not being super fast on this match you know, because of the time period, it's still really watchable and never boring at all. You know, there, there's other matches at the time. Some of my favorite matches where you're like, oh, here we go. Did he get him? Yeah, that's the finish. Oh, no, he got him. Yeah. That was it. Owen made the mistake. He went for the high risk move and he paid for it. All right, let's have some final thoughts on this matchup. Having this happen 30-something years ago, early 90s, ruled by monsters that didn't really get above the second rope. They are ahead of their time. I would bet you people will still watch this match in, another, in 30 years from now.